Well, it looks like we're going to get underway straight away as out come France, followed by Mexico. Two high quality teams in the lineup here. Let's throw down to our stadium announcer for the team introductions. Well, here we go for our first quarterfinal France lineup with Jean Charles Valadon, Pierre Clion, and Thomas Shiro. Mexico have Angel Alvarado, Luis Alvar Alvarez, and Carlos Roas. There is the 23 year old Thomas Shiro. European Games 2019 team gold medalist, the youngest member of the French squad. Just waiting for the range to be declared safe. And here we go. The race for an Olympic qualification spot is underway, and it's Thomas Shiro who will get us underway. No. No. Archers will shoot one arrow each before we rotate over to the other team and then we come back for the second arrows in the second rotation. Pierre Pion, the world number 21 on the shooting line. Shooting on a 70 metre range, three nines is not a bad start, eh, Nikki? Yeah, it's pretty solid there. We can hear a little bit of their support in the background. Obviously, they're on home soil here, and that's probably going to give them a bit of a lift too. Alvarado seemingly not worried about that uh, local support. And that will be counted as a 10 for Luis Alvarez as well. The 30-year-old uh, was a 2012 Olympian and got a medal at the Pan American Championships earlier this year, Nikki. Yeah, this has been good, good competition so far. And, you know, these guys have really been on the ball from the beginning of this year with, after that long break. Eight, yeah, drifting out to the left. The French arrow is just going a little left, actually. Yes, 
Well, up for a measure, second arrow from Pion. Jean-Charles Valadon, individual silver medalist at the Rio Olympic Games, also competed nine. in Beijing. He will definitely get a nine there. You can hear the teams communicating together, the coach giving a bit of feedback there with the arrows landed. Really important for these archers to adjust now and get that arrow back into the middle. Oh, just drifted out into the sevens there, so now on 44. So an eight could do it, depending on the measure for the French team, and nine is a definite. Nine. That, for me, is enough on 53 points. The French currently on 52, uh, potentially could get marked up to a 53. Nikki, um, it's very loud here, isn't it? Um, what was your thinking about that second arrow from uh, Pierre Plion? It was called as an eight, potentially nine. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it was really difficult to see because I think the arrow was um, low and slightly sticking up from the angle that we had. So kind of occluded what we needed to see. So if that arrow has broken that line, that black line around the, the goal, then it will be marked up. So that's for the judge to decide. They'll be down there with a, a microscope to see, uh, you know, magnifying glass to see what you know what they're going to call it. If they can't decide, it will have to be called up. Yeah, we'll take a look back, and uh, these are the, the first arrow from uh, Cleon, clearly in the nine ring. He looked pretty happy with that shot as well. And here is uh, a double Olympian, individual silver medalist from Rio, as I said, Jean Charles Valadon. We're hoping to make his third Olympic Games. There are a few people here as uh, measures are relaxing around the world, but as you can see, it's certainly not a packed stadium. Uh, now, France will be shooting first again, so we haven't had confirmation of the score just yet. I guess we'll get that as we look down the range. Mashiro has come out of the restricted period on stunning form. Leading out the line for the French team. You can see a little bit of shaking in these arches. You can see the nerves. You know how much this means. They've got to win this match. They've got to get some points on the board. So consistency, certainly. Three nines again. Just see the wind blowing those sling, finger sling of the front hand there, just blowing in the wind. He won't be able to get much from that himself, but it gives us an idea of what conditions the archers are shooting in. Yeah, 
Muy buen tiempo. Sólido. Oh, just drifting out into the eight, but 28 at the halfway stage and a one-point lead for the Mexican team. Oh, best shot of the lot from Tomás Giro. See that front arm shaking, a bit of nerves perhaps. So on for a 55 here. No. Finishing on 54. What a great shot, touching his other arrow there, the left side of the 10. Fantastic consistency. Yeah, it was the second three arrows that sort of fell away in the first set for the Mexicans. They, they obviously quickly adjusted to that. So a 57 possible here. Running out of time. Nine. And he's put it into the nine, which gives them a 56. And that will confirm the set points for the Mexicans. And they will now lead by three set points to one after the uh, French arrow was marked up in the first set. One set all coming into the second, but Mexico have pulled away with a better second half. Nikki, um, look, we haven't had much time to, uh, one, prepare or <laughs> gather our thoughts ahead of this, because these guys literally just came off the, the range from the last round. They have literally just stepped straight out to go into the quarterfinals. Um, so look, let's go, let's go back through where we are at in terms of Olympic quali qualification. We know nine teams are already qualified for the Olympic Games, um, including the host nation, Japan. Uh, have, have you got the other eight listed by you, or do you want me to read those out? Yep, so so far in the men's, we've got Australia, China, Chinese Taipei, Great Britain, India, South Korea, and the Netherlands all qualified. This is the last chance saloon. There's just three spots left here today to, to get your, your team space for this Olympics. And Kazakhstan also qualified as well on your list, I think you'll find. Right, indeed, you are. <laughs> along with the host nation, <laughs> along with the host nation, Japan. So three spots available today, uh, and here Mexico making a mark on the first quarter final. Look, whatever happens, as Nikki said, uh, the teams have got to get through this next round, this next group of matches, uh, and then if they win again, they're definitely booked a place in Tokyo. If they lose in the semi-finals, they'll have one last chance in the bronze medal playoff. But at the moment. Mexico in the box seat, leading by three set points to one. France to shoot first in the third set. I think the announcer called that as an, an eight, but I, I think that was touching the line. I think we might have a nine there to start. Good call. Important call as well. This is better from France, and they really need this. They've got to take at least, well, one point's not enough. They've got to win it. They've got to win this set outright. Yeah. 
good shooting there from Valadon. So a 28, potentially 29 if Nicky's right. And that first arrow was is marked up. So we switch over to Alvarado. Just 20 years old, the world number 47. Long hold. Eating into their time here, Mexico. So even with the eight, on well, my calculation, France, uh, one point up at the halfway stage, doing what they must. <laughs> wow, raw emotion there. You see... I mean, I think he thought it might have been a bit high. He pulled his front arm down, didn't need to turn to correct the, the shot and what shot it was. So finishing on a 56, but uh, as Nicky said, that could get marked up to a 57 if that first arrow is marked from an eight to a nine. Mexico on for 57, but they'd have to shoot three tens to get that. There's number one. Well, by my calculations, even if the first arrow is marked down to an eight for France, they have bagged the points here. <sighs> That's a close one as well, eight niner. But it's not going to be enough, and uh, the points will go to France three set points apiece. Now, Nikki, you said they had to win that set outright. Looks subject to confirmation that they've done that. What is the target score here? Because we're going into the fourth set and we're tied at three set points each. Yeah, so, you know, it's best of four sets. So if Mexico had tied that set up, they would have gone through as a 5-1 win. So five is enough. But if we think France has got two of the, point, two of the points here, we might see France to and Mexico four. So in this last set, if France can come back and win again, we will go four all and into a tie. Or if Mexico draw or win, they will take the match. There we go. So it sounds to me, as you, as you saw, uh, Alvarez there just uh, doing a bit of boquando, your new favorite word, Nikki. <laughs> I love, I love this. Mackenzie Brown, you're a legend. I think that is the best little archery uh, new catchphrase that I've heard. I love it, yeah. The, the little bit of correction. So the archer knows that the arrow is not going to hit where they wanted it to. They might have just seen that they aimed off slightly. They're trying to pull that bow over to make the best of it. So, yeah, the new phrase, bow quando. In all seriousness, though, Nikki, how much effect can you have on that arrow once you've released it? very little but i think psychologically more than anything else if you know it's going off you want to make you you know want to do something that's going to make a difference as quickly as you can you know can you make a tiny tiny amount of difference and if that's enough you know we're talking millimeters here so it could be enough to get that point that you need yes yeah, certainly could well as you can see as we look down the range three set points apiece france have come from behind to tie things up as we go into the crucial fourth set and 
to the mark steps Thomas Shiro. This to keep France's Olympic dream alive. Beautiful shot. That'll settle the nerves, Nikki. Yeah, that's exactly what you need to do. Get a good shot away. Feel that confidence. It's got to go out there one more time and do it again, but it's going to help your teammates as well. Take the pressure off. Nice start there. So 28 for France. Alvarado with the crucial first arrow for Mexico. And then he's drifted that out into the eight. So a bit of pressure now on his teammates, Roas and Alvarez. Just saw Alvarado there, just sending a few messages to uh, Rojas. <laughs> Clearly it works. That's back into the tent. Ha uh, Nicky, how much will Alvarado had said to Rojas then? Is it all just about that was a good shot I aimed in the wrong direction or, or what else? Yeah, pretty much. You know, Did you shoot a good shot? Because if you know you shot a bad shot and it went off to the side, then it's your fault. You need to communicate that to your team members. No. Or if it's a good shot, you need to aim off here. You know, they, They'll know as a team where they need to uh, give that communication over. He's really on form now, isn't he? Wait. So on for a 57 here. So finishing with 56. I don't want to burst Mexico's bubble here, but they're on 44 at the moment. Mexico can only get to 54, and France have scored 56. So this set is out of reach, as unfortunately for Mexico are the Tokyo Olympic Games. Finishing with a 53, France have come from 3-1 behind to win this crucial quarterfinal five set points to three and make it through to the semi-finals keeping their chance of olympic qualification alive it's an interesting dynamic in this french team as well with shiro leading the line out the youngest member of the team uh, leading the line out valadon the most experienced at 32 uh, with two olympic games already behind him individual silver medal at rio 2016 there's two first and third very calm very controlled very methodical and then you've got the little firecracker a firework of energy in pierre plion they're through to the semi-finals on home soil nikki it's a great team to watch isn't it 
absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they've been on form this year, haven't they? Um, we just saw them recently, two weeks ago in the European Championships as well. And I think, you know, coming off the back of that experience for them, um, you know, it's just led them, you know, all the way up here. So it's going to be good to see them again in the next round to see if they can win their semi-final and book their place.